around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Here, my brother. Hello, Bigfoot. I have watched you come. You're welcome. You've traveled a fur piece from your lodges. Sometimes trail is long. Come, we will have food. <laughs> Sit. I'm hungry. That's a fact. Here, antelope. Eat. Oh. <clears throat> I was afraid for a while there. Eh? My ribs was going to stick together. You come with news? Yeah, Bigfoot. I told you I'd bring you news. You can head back to your lodges. The man with the scar is dead? No, no, he ain't dead, but he's been picked up. Picked up? Mm-hmm. Marshall's got him. In the pokey. In jail. But he is not dead. Well, not yet he ain't. He may be soon enough. Marshall's riding him out to Hay City tomorrow to be tried for murder. No, no. his life belonged to me. <laughs> well, what do you care, Bigfoot, just so they got him? This man, Rouse, killed my father. His life belonged to me. You're not thinking straight, Bigfoot. Forget all this and go home. Leave Rouse to the law. Ron, my brother. Yeah? Your trail goes past the lodges of my people. I should be riding past there tonight. I ask you to see my son, Young Hawk, and send him here to me. Sure, I can do that, Bigfoot, but... I'm telling you again, I wouldn't get myself mixed up in nothing if I was you. The murder of my father must be answered. Yeah, but the law has arrested this fellow, Rouse. They'll take care of him. His life does not belong to white man. It belonged to me. Now eat. You will need food to travel. Dillon? Yeah. Did it ever strike you how much time folks waste just writing things down? I can't say I've done much worrying about it, no. Well, you see every day how much of it's going on. Oh? How's that? Well, when I go to pick up the mail, there's always a whole pile of letters there, ain't there? Well, that's what the mail's for, Chester, to bring letters. Yes, Mr. Dillon, I know that, but every one of them letters has something wrote down in it, don't it? Yeah? Yeah, now, I don't mean circulars and important things like that. I mean all them letters that don't say nothing more than just howdy and how you've been, etc. Why, if they were to take all the letters that was wrote in this country on a single day, they wouldn't be worth a whole boot. Uh, you may be right, Chester. But I know one thing. What's that? 
You'd be pretty hard to live with if you didn't get one of those worthless letters every now and then. Well, now, I... Hey, come on, let's get a beer and cool off, huh? Money, Lane, it sure is dark coming in out of that bright sun, ain't it? I can see well enough to make it out that Doc beat us to it. Yeah, yeah well, hello, Doc. Oh, <laughs> Miss Kitty. Just it, Matt. Come on, sit down. Oh, thanks, Kitty. Thank you, Kylie. Well, I'm surprised to see you here at this time of day, Doc. Oh, I don't think you're in any position to call attention to a man's taking time off for a little refreshment. Well, I wouldn't even notice any man but you. What do you mean by that? Well, you're always so ready to give a piece of your mind whenever anybody else takes a little time off. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Doc tells me you're taking a trip tomorrow, man. Yeah, I'm delivering a prisoner to Hayes City. Hmm? Mr. Don't. I just don't feel easy about you taking that cussed rouse up there all alone. Well, what's the matter, Chester? Don't you think Matt can take care of himself? Why, of course he can take care of himself, Miss Kitty, but this fellow is awful mean. It just might work out to be easier if I was to go along on the stage with you. Why don't you take him with you, Matt? Uh, Chester has to stay in Dodge, Kitty. We got another man in jail. It wouldn't hurt him none if we just left him locked up overnight, Mr. Dillon. The way he was feeling this morning, he probably wouldn't even know the difference. Chester, you're staying here. Yes, sir. Well, Matt. If this man's dangerous, maybe you'd better take Chester. Yes, Matt, by all means. Uh, that's what I think, Mr. Dillon. I'll get him there alone. I'm going to go get that beer. you, Marshal, arranging a private stage, so to speak. Hey, Marshal, you hear me? Yeah, I heard you. It's my guess nobody wanted to ride that close to you. <laughs> I don't know. I ain't such a bad sort of a fella. Hey, Marshal, you know, I could be real comfortable this trip if you just undo these here wrist irons. Marshal, you got the gun. Ain't nobody else here to object. I'd object, sir. Well, that don't make no sense, Marshal. Listen, you're feared of me. <laughs> hey, is that it, Marshal? You feared to ride with me with my hands free? Huh? Even without a gun? You talk too much, Ross. Yeah, you're feared of me. Why don't you shut that... up? <laughs> Jim! Indians, Matt! Up How many? Just two, it looks like. All right. Oh. Oh. Hey, why, why are we stopping? Maybe we can talk to him. We sure can't outrun him. Oh. Hey, Marshal, shoot. Shoot, Marshal. Why don't you shut up and sit still? You are wise, Marshal. Now I take your gun. Bigfoot. The gun. Throw it out. Good. I didn't know you were a hold-up man, Bigfoot. Not hold-up man. You've gone to a lot of trouble for nothing. There's no gold on this stage. I don't look for gold. I look for prisoner. Rouse? I want prisoner. Marshal, don't, don't you let him get Shut me. up, Ma Rouse. Marshal. Bigfoot, you and I have been friends. You've been able to take my word. Yeah. Marshal has always acted with honor. Well, then let me tell you something. I'm taking this man to Hayes City to be tried for murder. The evidence against him is great. He'll probably hang. No, oh, his life belongs to me. He may not have a life at all after the trial. You take him. You won't either. He killed my father. Let the law punish him, then. Don't start trouble with the tribes. I do not start trouble. He started trouble. Well, let me finish it for you, then. Let me take him on to Hayes City. I promise you justice, Bigfoot. He will have justice. My son! Get off your horse. Now, Marshal, you and your prisoner will get out of the stage. 
And you, driver, you will sit quiet and not be foolish. Come, now get out. I suppose you've got a plan for me. The marshal must come with me for a while. You're making a mistake, Bigfoot. I would make mistake to let Marshall go free. All right, my son. By the hands of Marshall, I will watch prisoner. And you, driver, you free to go. Do not return to Dodge. a bullet on you, Ross. They just drag you back. The gamble isn't good enough. Ain't you going to do nothing? I have to be alive to do it. What does that mean? It means I'm going to wait for a better chance than making an open target of myself. With my hands tied. You, you should have left my hands free. If your hands had been free and you'd tried to do anything, you'd be dead right now. You know what they're going to do. Bigfoot wants to give you a fair trial, Ross. They're going to walk us to the encampment. There's a meeting in the council of the tribe. Yeah. Dirty engines. At least they're giving you a chance. That's more than you did for Bigfoot's father when you oh, shot Oh, he was just a no-good dirty engine. Marshal, listen, I want to tell you... You make me that... sick. Why don't you shut up? I want to get some sleep. I tell you true, I ain't gonna last much longer. Quit crying, Ross. Well, we must have come 20 miles since sunup. Walking while them engines ride. I know how far we've come. I walked it with you. Well, you ain't roped to no horse like me. And you got your hands free. Daytimes, anyway. Ain't fair. They're not worried about what you think, Ross. You sound like you're on their side. Well, it's not an easy choice. You wouldn't raise a finger to save me, would you? Listen to me, Ross. I may not like it, but it's my job to get you to Hayes City alive. Uh, you don't act like you're trying very hard. I tell you, Marshal, this ain't hardly human. Being drug along prairie like this. It's just more than a man can stand. You're still on your feet, aren't you? Well, yeah, but I... You better try and keep it that way. What does that mean? They could keep right on dragging you when you quit walking. I'll keep walking. You better start saving your breath, too. Marshall, ain't they never going to stop? I don't know. We ain't even stopped for water since mid-morning. Yeah. Ain't you thirsty? Well, ain't you... Why don't you shut up? Marshall, we... Oh. Hey, Marshall, listen to me. You gotta let... I gonna make it much longer. Marshall, I got a rock in my boot. It's going right through my foot. That's too bad. I mean it, Marshal. I just ain't gonna be able to walk no further. 
You want me to carry it? Talk to him. Make him stop. Just just while I take it out. I'm not likely to stop for you to feel easier. Might if you ask him, ain't got nothing against you. They just seeing you don't free me is all. Oh, please, Marshal, ask him to stop just for a minute. Will you... All right, Ross. But you keep quiet, you hear? You let me do the talking. Sure, sure, Marshal. I will. Bigfoot. Bigfoot. I want to talk to you. Come. Ross, your prisoner, has a stone in his boot. He wants you to undo his hand so he can take it on. So he can go on walking. He will walk. You'll make better time to your council if you don't have to drag him. In a mile, we reach a stream. Water horses. Fix foot then. Well, and now. At the stream. We go. Before you fall down, we're heading for the stream. You gonna stop? That's what he said. Now. Marshal, you and prisoner, sit. Oh. Oh, oh I thought I'd never sit down again. You better be sure you can get up. Yeah. You get, get him to untie my hands so that I get my boot off. Please. You gonna untie his hands, Bigfoot? He wants to take his boot off. Young Hawk, untie rope from horse. Oh, oh, oh. Hey. Now just take a handcuffs. No handcuffs. I can't do nothing this way. Marshal? Yeah. This is where it will be done. I will water horses. You will take boot off. My son will stay with you. He will watch. I'd take my own boot off. The marshal will do it. You better settle for that, Ross, if you want that rock out. You stay, son, and watch. Oh, I watch. All right, Ross. Which foot is it? It's this one, the right one. All right. Now, brace yourself. Yeah. Easy, easy, easy there. Well, do you want your boot off or not? Yeah, but look, pull it slow. Pull, pull it real slow. I've known old women in my time. Yeah, that's that's right, slow. Yeah. Hey, young hawk, you just look here. Just look, lean over here. Lean up. Now, you see? See? Look out. Look <laughs> out. Gotcha, you dirty. You knifed him. I sure did, Marshal. I got it right in his belly. Young Hawk. Here, let me see. I worked that out real good, didn't I? <laughs> Young Hawk. Why, you dirty pig, you killed him. Well, I wasn't aiming to just tickle him. Now grab his gun before his old man gets back. I'd worry about that if I were you. Go on, grab his gun. All right, I got it. That's the way. See, now you and me's got the deal. All you got to do is shoot that engine when he comes back, and we all set. I'm not going to shoot him. You know what? He hasn't killed anybody. You have. Dylan, are you crazy? I'm a white man. You're nothing to He's be a... proud of. Hey, here he comes. Why don't you shoot him, Marshal? Go on, shoot him. Bigfoot. My son. Hurt? He's dead. Shoot heaven's name. Marshal, shoot him. Marshal, you did not do this thing. No, Bigfoot, I'm sorry I couldn't stop it. Dylan. He pulled a knife from his Will boot. you shoot him? This white man, 
He crawls on a snake's belly. We'll punish him, Bigfoot. I guarantee that. I punish him now. The white snake is dead. Yeah, he's dead. Bigfoot has done what he had to do. It is finished. Not quite, Bigfoot. I'm going to have to take you in. It does not matter. My father lies dead. My son lies dead. The white man who killed them lies dead. It is finished. Here, my gun. Hey, Doc. Eh? Don't you suppose it's getting nearly time to eat? Eat again? <laughs> Just finished breakfast by now, huh? Doc, Chester. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, Kitty. Oh, hold there, Miss Kitty. Aren't you out kind of early? I'm bringing a message to Matt. A friend of his was in the Long Branch last night and wanted me to say hello for him when Matt got back. He didn't get back. I thought he was due in on the stage this morning. That's what I thought, too, Miss Kitty, and it's left me in an awful pickle. Well, what, what's the trouble, Chester? Well, that prisoner in there, the one he left with me in the jail. Well, what's the matter with him? Nothing's the matter with him, except he thinks he should get out, and I'd like to let him out, too. I'm tired of feeding him. Well, you got the key, haven't you? Yeah, well, Doc, of course I got the key, but I ain't sure it's fitting to me to let anybody out without authority. Well, looks like you can ask Matt. Hmm? Yes, sir. Well, well, look at that. Well, I guess Mr. Dillon decided to ride back. Well, with an Indian? And on an Indian pony? Yeah, that is kind of strange now, ain't it? Hello, Matt. Chris Dillon? Hello, Kitty. Doc. Yeah, Matt. Uh... Chester. Yes, sir. Put this man in the cell, will you? Lock him up? That's what I said. Yes, sir. All right, Bigfoot. Go with Chester. Well, Matt, I, I guess we needn't have worried about you. You start off with one prisoner and you come back with another. <laughs> Just like it were no trouble at all. Yeah. Well, if you don't mind, I'll see you both later. Mm, sure, Matt. Why, is it... Is there something wrong, Matt? What could be wrong, Doc? Like you said, Kitty, it's no trouble at all. Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, Lawrence Dobkin, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. And now, here's a special word from our star. This is William Conrad. I don't often step out of Matt Dillon's shoes on the air. And I'm going to do it today for an important reason called Radio Free Europe. Did you know that 93% of the refugees escaping Iron Curtain countries proved to be Radio Free Europe listeners? At risk of life itself, captive people do listen 
hunger for the truth about the free world. Your truth dollars, your help, whatever the amount, will keep the truth going through the Iron Curtain. Send it now to the Crusade for Freedom, care of your post office. Gunsmoke is a presentation of the CBS Radio Network.